Good morning all. Today we will see about clinical masking. This video is an oversimplified version of uh, clinical masking concepts. I am preparing this video for, uh, for students of first semester and second semester uh, who may be finding, it, uh, finding these concepts very new. And for others, this may be like a refresher video because you know all the concepts already so this is only a refresher video let's get into it uh, this is uh, this video is created in a way this i'm trying to clear uh, clear make things simpler with a story mode and this is oversimplified it's not just simplified this is oversimplified few are uh, illogical to say that's why i said oversimplified let's consider as uh, a war is happening between two villages one village is named as T and the other village is termed, uh, named as NTE. One village and other village is separated through water. So they have to travel through a boat or a ship and then reach the other uh, village and attack. So a boat requires a particular amount of men to row the boat. That depends on the size of the boat. In our example, we will take a boat which requires only 40 men to row the boat. What happens after uh, reaching the location of those 40 men is that they will be completely tired and exhausted and uh, they will not be used for anything. They cannot, uh, uh, can, can, will be included for the war, fighting or anything. Those 40 men will remain in the ship and they will not be used for anything else. Okay. The next thing, the village, we have to notice is the wall, okay. This wall I am speaking about, okay. In this wall, this is the first line of defense for uh, each village. This wall is so thick that it requires a particular amount of men to break that wall. Again, by breaking this wall, the men will get tired and exhausted. They will also be not fit to fight the enemy forces. Okay, so we will also not consider them when we are going to uh, comment about the fighting. Okay, and then this, the triangle one, which looks like a small home, this contains the men, the army men are settled inside. This is like a tent inside. And uh, depending on the situation, we are going to command them to come for fighting. Okay, we will decide how many men we are going to send. Okay, for now, let's consider that the T village is attacking the NT village. Okay, so the T village is going to send 50 men from this side to from uh, this side to NT village okay sorry then what happens now is 50 men use the same boat to reach the NT village what happens by that time since they have used excuse me Since they have used 40 of their men in rowing the boat, they are completely tired and exhausted. So when they reach this point, there are only 10 men who are fit to fight. But there is something in between the soldiers and this 10 army men of the tea village. This thickness of the wall depends on the situation or the strength of the NT village. In this scenario, we will consider that it requires 10 men to break this wall. We have 10 men standing here in front of the wall. They are trying to break this and they have broke it. So this 10 men also get tired and exhausted and there will not be any men left to fight this army of NT village. Okay. So, they sent 50 men, 40 of their men uh, row the boat to the NT village, to the border. And to break this first line of defense wall, 10 of their men, remaining men were used 
so now they have left with no men so this uh, mission was a failure okay there was no need of defensing this army men had no work so there is no defense at all in this example okay there is no problem created in this village the village is completely peaceful now so they go back okay this men they uh, they consider this as a failure and they go back let's refresh now what happens they decide okay let's go back with more men so they decide we will go with 70 men this time okay let's do the same math here seven out of the 70 men they are using 40 of their men to row the boat and at the border when they reach there are 30 men 70 minus 40 out of 30 men as we already said and we continue to keep the wall with the same strength 10 of 10 men are required to break the wall so out of 30 men who are available in the border they are using 10 of their men to break this wall now this is broke and they entered here with how many men there are 20 men already standing here to fight the army of nt village now we are going to send the nt soldiers to fight the t soldiers okay name it as t this is the t soldiers and here we will say about the nt soldiers how many army men we have to send can we send 5 or can we send 10 or 15 what happens when we send less number of army men the 20 t soldiers will easily overpower the nt soldiers the minimum uh, nt soldiers and they will again create nuisance so we need to send minimum equal amount of soldiers to fight them so minimum amount we have to send is only equal amount which is 20 soldiers so now the 20 soldiers and the 20 soldiers are fighting and there is no problem the city is in peace okay it's done what happens if they send 90 soldiers this time okay what happens if they send sorry 90 soldiers this time here it will be 50 soldiers we use the same strength when they entered it will be 40 soldiers now again if we provide if we send for defense any less any soldiers less than 40 they are going to overpower them and they are going to acquire this anti village so minimum we have to send 40 soldiers okay fine minimum we have to send 40 but what is the maximum one let's consider we are going to send 100 soldiers this time okay we send 100 soldiers what happens this 100 soldiers will overpower this 40 okay and now it's time for them to take revenge they will travel back to the t village to occupy when they are traveling back Oh no no when they are taking offense this time on the t village this 100 nt soldiers have to use 40 of their men to come reach at this border okay they have to reach here when 100 of the soldiers reach here they will be 60 in number okay so now the wall will be very stronger because they have anticipated the attack if their army fail they definitely will attack so their wall is now stronger so it requires 30 men to fight and break this wall 60 men are here 30 men break the wall and when they enter it is 30 since they have sent all the soldiers they don't have anyone and they have acquired the t village it's a total failure for t village army
okay so with this story we are going to understand a few concepts of masking when we sent an army from the t village to the nt village okay it can only go through this water okay there was no other way of transferring the t soldiers to the nt village okay so the cross over the cross over is transferring the test ear okay the tone in the test ear which goes to the non test ear when the tone transfers from the t village is the test ear and nt village is the non test ear when it comes to the non test ear we call this as cross over while coming from the test ear to the non test ear it will lose some energy like how they lost 40 of their men depending on the boat they used there here we use tdh okay let's name it as tdh teledynamic headphones which are uh, usually used in the clinics so it has to lose 40 db okay it has to lose 40 db of it to come to the non test ear okay so we have spoke about interoral attenuation then what happens we spoke about this wall strength this one okay this is your bc threshold okay why is this important if you have to defend more soldiers you can increase the strength of the wall so even if there are 50 soldiers who are arriving if you make the wall very strong then this 50 soldiers will get tired breaking this wall and then the whole uh, village is safe likewise until the wall is not broken the nt village is not under attack it's in under peace okay likewise until the tone that is transferred that that moved from test ear to the non test ear doesn't is the number is not more than the bc threshold then there is no cross hearing the tone is not heard and there is no need of masking okay i repeat when i give a tone to the test ear this tone is passing to the non test ear okay after it has reached the non test ear if it is less than the bc threshold then there is no problem if it is more than the bc threshold then only masking has to be initiated okay so this is called as cross hearing okay then what we said we are going to send few soldiers based on the amount of soldiers who cross the bc threshold cross this wall so when i calculate how much of the tone how much db of the tone has crossed the bc threshold i consider it as in this example 40 40 db of the tone is above the bc threshold so the minimum amount of noise which i have to give to mask this tone is 40 db less than that i am not going to mask the tone because the louder sound only will be heard okay like like uh, the soldiers who have more numbers will always dominate so the minimum masking concept is also dealt here with the example okay and we also discussed about the 100 soldiers what happens if we give more soldiers if we give more soldiers they will return back they will attack the t village okay likewise if you give more noise to the non test ear in an effort in an effort to at, uh, defend this tone unnecessary tone that is coming from the test ear if we give more number of noise much amount of noise it will go to the test ear itself and make disturbance in the test ear but our purpose is to find the threshold of the test ear the noise will 
affect and influence the threshold of the test ear. So, we should not be giving, I am sorry, this is under masking. Okay, so the under masking is we have to provide equal number of soldiers. If we provide less than that, then it is under masking. They will overpower the soldiers. Okay, then if we provide more number of soldiers, they will go and attack this T village. They will go, the noise will go to the test ear and disturb the testing process. Okay, and anything between that is your minimum masking. and maximum masking so you can send the amount of soldiers between the minimum and maximum so that it happens only inside this particular box